The way my parents came to be together is a quite remarkable story. In the summer of 1957, my 18 year old father left Hong Kong on a boat destined for Liverpool. Just over a month later, he arrived. For the next eight years or so, he worked in Chinese restaurants in Chester and Margate, as well as in Liverpool, before finally settling in Cornwall in the mid-sixties. Round about the same time, my parents started writing to each other. My mother was in Hong Kong, an 18-year-old girl very much influenced by the fashion and music of the sixties. She used to tell me that her and her friends used to hire stills cameras for the day and go out and shoot photos of whatever they were doing, whether it was hanging out at stations with the local lads eating ice cream, or just posing for the sake of it. However, my grandfather was a floundering, physically abusive patriarch. My mother said he once nearly drowned her for misbehaving, and he was also a well-known man in the village. As a result of all of this, my mother felt trapped and depressed, and basically always watching her step. My father's family, now they used to live in a fairly remote part of Kowloon, so whenever they needed to go and get some supplies, they had to get a ferry and then get a minibus to get to the local market. My mother's parents used to drive the minibuses to and from the ferry in the market. My grandmother got to know my father's eldest sister, my auntie, because her and her husband, who'd only been married a year or so, had adopted my mother's first cousin. In gratitude, my auntie told my grandmother that she had a brother, my father, who was in England and was looking for a wife. My auntie mentioned this to my grandmother because she knew that my grandmother was looking for a husband for my mother. Villagers just made arrangements like these between each other back then. My grandmother, desperate for my mother to escape the tyranny of the household, saw it as a way out for her daughter. There was also a certain pride value attached to marrying off one's daughter to a successful adventurous bachelor overseas, and probably some element of exotic whimsy too. Liverpool could easily sound mysterious in Hakka Chinese. Alright, maybe not. My mother was deeply upset by this arrangement. However, my grandmother told my mother that she should at least send my father a letter and a photo. After all, she had nothing to lose. She didn't have to marry him if she didn't really like him, and besides it was a potential escape from the unhappiness at home. Fortunately for my sister Joanna and I, they ended up liking each other and my mother ended up joining him in Penzance in November of 1967. There was a huge entourage of family and friends at the airport to see my mother off the day she was leaving. Although she knew she had made the right decision, because she did desperately want to escape my grandfather's despotic tendencies, it was nonetheless a difficult experience for my mother, leaving all her friends and family to go to the other side of the world to marry someone she only knew through letters. My mother arrived in England in the winter of 1967, and by February of 1968, when she was 19, she got married to my father, who was 28. My mother says they were the first Chinese couple to be married in Penzance, and most probably Cornwall too. Most of my vivid childhood memories focus on the Mayflower restaurant that my parents managed and owned. They had become well known in Shura for their down to earth hospitality and through their work in a restaurant integrated themselves into the Cornish community. I remember that my father liked to go out boozing with this huge pub landlord called Big John. He was one of those larger than life characters who I found a little intimidating as a young boy, but at the same time didn't completely dislike. Then, in October of 1993, my father died of liver failure and hepatitis B. He became ill when he returned from the Far East in the summer of 1992 and was on kidney dialysis treatment for just under a year. Thereafter, his health deteriorated rapidly. For my mother, my sister Joe and I, though, it seemed like forever. <laughs> My mother has decided that she's going to go and live in China for six months in February. She wants to improve her Mandarin Chinese, learn more about Chinese calligraphy, and no doubt expand her knowledge of Chinese cooking. Dead proud of her. It's funny how things work out. Shoo 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 shoo